All right. What'd you think? I thought Jack was great. And as always, Jack has a lot of great things to say. So yeah, he, um, he had a lot of amazing one liners. And I was like, I don't think he does a ton of interviews. So I know these aren't like his go to lines. And I was just like, I was like writing everything down. I was like, I just love all these like quotes and one liners. Um, what was the one he had uh, about the flesh? He said, uh, you want to meet fresh <laughs> flesh. When he said that, I literally <laughs> like, I tried not to like laugh out loud, but that was pretty funny. Yeah, it's like, you know, a little, little turn on pressing the flesh. You want to press some new flesh, right? Yeah, I guess um, I've heard. Yeah, we've heard the term everyone or not everyone, but, you know, pressing the flesh is a common term. But um, yeah, <laughs> I, the thing I like about Jack and some advice, you know, he gave me about investing uh, in a text message right early on was that it's like, you know, you're putting your balls on the line, so to speak, yeah. when you're investing. And I think that's all, like what I always get from Jack is passion and like skin in the game like he's just that's really what it's about and it's i don't know it's it's a bit refreshing that he just really puts it out there and i i I don't know i appreciate that about that so yeah i mean i think he definitely i got the sense immediately that he was like no bullshit hey this is who i am you know like i think at the end he was like kind of throwing around some pretty big numbers and i didn't want to like totally throw the interview off key but i'm like dude i've gotten into many deals with only 5k maybe the companies i'm investing in are not that good (laughs) but i've gotten into plenty of deals for 5 or 10k direct um so i do think it's kind of cool because you know he started obviously everyone you know starts from the bottom or almost everyone starts from the bottom and you know he's like hey this is what i'm doing this is how i i think it it's done and like how i'm doing it and i think it's worked out well and he's like not you know but you could also tell at the same time he like loves to help people and you know kind of uh you know i think it's something about that buffalo <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, you know i i agree like the the check size thing isn't i haven't experienced that as much but i also think he started investing a bit earlier than you yeah. know than kind of our time frame and i think it was just a bit different era and so now especially with like angelist all these other platforms it's just kind of normalized being able to do smaller checks i mean you know we both use the syndication softwares and it's now it's just easy yeah. um I but think i do there think is something more. yeah I, I like what he said though about right like in investing right it's like kind of about access and like they always say with public stocks right like oh you should never invest right and you know like oh uh you know if, if public like everything is public about a public stock right like the financials and what's going on like everything is already priced into the stock so if you're investing in a company because they're doing something well the theory is that if everyone already knows what they're doing well and you're investing because of that that's already priced into the stock and so i kind of like what he talked about in that and then the same thing like with kind of like if everyone has access on angel list i guess you technically need to be an accredited investor like i kind of imagine like it's a good way to dip your toes in but like i don't know if you're just like looking at deals on angel list and picking the best ones and that's kind of open to everyone like yeah it sounded like he said you're not going to get great or at least he thinks you're not going to get great returns that way yeah i've got a a good agree or disagree i i agree i've I've got a good friend here in uh town that's a longtime angel investor and does his own syndicate um guy named pavel and i think one of the things he always says to me is or like the thing that he thinks about with all these investments that come across his table, especially on Angelus, is like, why am I so lucky? Mm-hmm. Why am I so lucky to get to see this deal? <laughs> and if it seems too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. Um, and like your point, access is everything, right? Like if everyone yeah. has had access to it, you're not lucky, right? Like you're just, you're part of everybody else knowing about it. And yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I. I don't think it's bad to syndicate things, but I think they're good, like specifically to fill out things. Yeah. Right. Like you got 100K left to fill out in your round and you don't want to go round up all the checks yourself. That's good. Uh, um, but I also think like the syndications are really good for if you can get, like, it's kind of what I like to do is to go out and get good groups of people yeah. that are useful yeah. for you because angel for investing, sure. that's what's great about angel investor, like Jack said, is like they're going to like help you out. They're going to be like an extension of your workforce. And, 
I think that's like just like having like a bunch of little mini evangelists for your company. Just like, oh, every time, you know, like it's so funny how if you invest 2,500 bucks into a company, you now feel so connected to that product, that team. You're at a dinner party and someone's talking about, you know, this software, the eight sleep bed, or, you know, everyone loves the eight sleep bed, right? And it's like, oh my God, you got to try the eight sleep. I put 2,500, you know what I mean? Like I have a $2,500 check at a, you know, $250 million company. You're not really an owner. You're like such a tiny owner, but that, it's like a tangible feeling. And I think like often I always tell people like perception is more important than reality. Like it doesn't matter that you own like 0.0001% of the company. Technically you are an owner of the company. I feel like that's kind of what you can take advantage of as both an angel and a founder, which is super cool. Perception is reality. Yeah, that's all right. I'm going to start being like Jack and start coming up with a bunch. I'm just going to be like, this This can go on a t-shirt. I think maybe you and I, we can pick our favorite Jack quote and put it on a hat or a t-shirt and send it to him. Do you think he would like that? Oh, he, he would love it. He is such a good sport right. about everything. Good, he's a, loves levity. So, All right, let's pick our favorite Jack quote. Um, this is going to be hard work for, I think I've got the, the flesh one and we'll make either a hat or t-shirt. And um, fresh flesh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fresh flesh. Actually, that's perfect. Like a hat that I, just says fresh flesh. I, I like that. Yeah, I like it too. Let's, oh, let's man. do it. You know, we we said we wouldn't try and monetize this podcast at least at the start, <laughs> but um, I don't know. That could be a good first piece well, of swag. Put up Limited the Zazzle run. store or whatever. And yeah, I like... know. Dang, Zazzle is great. Um, so <sighs> I thought it would be fun just to like this was not planned at all. And I don't know if you even realize I'm recording this, or I think I told you we're recording this, but uh, I kind of thought of this as like, there was so much good info. It'd just be fun to do like 10, 15 minute, like recap after show. So that was kind of what I was thinking. The other thing I liked of what he really said was um, like, when you're kind of getting into angel uh, to do an, be an LP and like an early fund or um, an emerging manager or something like that. Cause it definitely, you know, you start to see, you know, they're very professional about it, right? They, they definitely send quarterly up, right? Like some companies don't send updates, right? And usually not very good ones, right? They'll send updates. They've got, you know, I just got invited to a LP. I don't know what they call it. Like an LP day here in LA for a big fund that I'm in um, and uh, summit, you know, like their LP summit. Sorry, I'm blinking on the name. Uh, but I like that advice. I think that was one thing, like one of the most like tangible or actionable pieces of advice he said that I thought like, if I could start over, I would do that. Yeah. And I've kind of been seeing it on my side, you know, with something I do because I love marketplaces and just doing as I've been offering, you know, VCs that I know to say, Hey, if you're looking at a deal, I'd love to like give you some feedback on it. Yeah. And you'd be surprised by just putting yourself out there, even if you're not an LP in the fund or investing or just like offering to help it can go a long ways. And you learn a lot and they tell you how they think about it. And then that's really the positive thing there is like just getting people's like mindset on why is this a good investment? Why is it not a good investment? Why do they pass on it? So I yeah. try to ask everyone, what's your reasoning? And I don't know. I've learned the most that way personally. So I, I agreed. Uh, but I guess if you pay to be uh, in the fund as an LP, they're really going to give you some great feedback. So, or hopefully. I, I also think, uh, you know, one area where I would push back on Jack is that um, I think all minimums are basically bullshit, right? Like if you're valuable <laughs> yeah. enough for adding value, like I'm a 25K LP in like a bunch of different funds and they all have 250 to 500K minimums. But, you know, I come in with a good pitch, like, oh, I'm the right share guy. You know, I know everything about Uber and Lyft and that's my niche, you know, and hype myself up a bit because, you know, I'm trying to get them, you know, I'm trying to sell myself to them and let me in as an LP. Um, and, you know, so if you ever get any companies in transportation, mobility, like that's my niche. I'm your guy. I can chat with them. I can connect them with companies. And I think, you know, it's like a pretty good pitch because obviously everyone knows Uber. And so I definitely lean into that. And I think that I've never had an issue, you know, getting in at, you know, much lower minimums than what the stated was. Uh, So I think that's the other thing. Like, and, you know, if I, I always look at it as like a signal, like I always tell people, like if they're not letting you in for below their minimum, it's because like you're not bringing enough. Like if you were valuable enough or they thought mm, you were valuable enough, they would. Right. Like if you ask for your boss for a raise and they say, no, you're not providing enough value to merit that raise. Like you and I, or at least I have hired hundreds of people. I suck at hiring. It's so hard. Like my best people, if they ask me for, hopefully they're not listening right now. Cause they asked me, they asked me for like a 10 or 20% raise right now. And they were like, or I'm going to quit. I'd be like, hell yeah, take it. I don't want to go hire someone new. That's so much work. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it comes I back. I totally to just threw myself under the bus. Oh, it's funny. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, I, I think with the, the whole minimums thing, it, like you said, it's a, fle- it's a flesh trade. Um, yeah. you know, um, you know, like you're offering like for you specifically, like you offer marketing, right? I mean, like yeah. there's a really like tangible effect for some of these like portfolio companies for these people to like, get access to like someone that's done a lot for Uber's affiliate program and things like that. You've got the drivers, like you've aggregated something of value. And I, you know, I, like, like you said, I've actually never had the problem either. People like have wanted me to come in and kind of even offer lower amounts because they want you to come in because they want experts or they want, you know, maybe your name or pedigree, whatever it is. Um, But I, I think, yeah, like you said, if you have the value, people will do it. And, if you don't immediately see it, you need to come up with why you have value. Because people yeah. at the end of the day do want people in, right? Um, but they do need to see the value for it and use it as something they can market. Yeah. Last question. How do you think we did interview-wise, like um, asking questions, the questions we asked, the sort of back and forth and all that? I, I thought it was good. Uh, overall, I like the cadence. I like the questions we asked. I really like getting into kind of the history and like the yeah. learning there. Uh, you know, I think you and I are still learning the the game of uh, who's <laughs> this is literally and, our second podcast like, and our first yeah. interview together. So, where it's like, where did you, you know, like me texting it. you during the interview, or was that annoying? I heard your phone vibrate. You I am just do impressed not by your. Mul- <laughs> I'm impressed by your multitasking. I'm like, I was like, liking the notes you're taking. Like, it's just such yeah. good stuff that I like. I'm. I would have to re- I, it was funny it was when when I was like texting you and I was looking at you were like super focused on Jack. I'm like taking notes and writing timestamps. I'm like, oh, this would be a great TikTok or a short and texting you, uh, um, hearing your phone vibrate. And, you know, I ordered DoorDash during the interview. No, just kidding. I didn't go that far. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think there's probably something to be said. Like it's probably better to focus 100% solely on the interview and really like enjoy it. But at the same time, you know, it's also, I'm kind of lazy. It's like so much work for me to go back in after and be like, Oh, this would be a good quick clip or oh, I want to take this note. Or, you know, we gave a few shout outs. I want to let them know, like, I'd kind of like my work for this podcast, Colin is done. Like I'm not doing anything after this. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, likewise, I like, I, oh, no, I'm going to, I have a couple asks yeah. of you, but uh, oh man, <laughs> since you were, uh, since you were paying attention during the interview, you know, you, uh, you have to uh, make it up a little and come up with a couple shorts, maybe. All right. Well, that's fine. We'll talk about Jack it. has already given me an intro, by the way. So wow. he is lived up to his nickname, Speedy Jack. So uh, Speedy, Speedy, Speedy Greco. Yeah, that was his oh, uh, Speedy Greco yeah, I Zoom name. Up. So I think, yeah, we, we don't need to chat for too long on this first uh, recap. I think it's worth publishing. So I think this uh, recap, uh, Jack Greco recap after show party, uh, will come up with a better title, but uh, I think it will see the light of day. And I feel like, yeah, we, I think we did a pretty good job interview wise, like, you know, kind of the, you know, just sort of somewhat alternating unless you or I felt um, it was something interesting. You knew Jack uh, and I didn't. So, you know, kind of like introing him, I thought was perfect with you kind of doing the bio. And, you know, I will say like the two things, you know, we had planned to do a 20 minute interview with Jack and then maybe hit a couple segments, you know, like what'd you do last week in the world of angel investing and trending Twitter threads and um, with or without Jack, depending if you wanted to stay on, that was the original plan. And I feel like he did such a good job with the interview. I was like, I'd rather listen to Jack talk more than me or you, you know, like bullshit about what we did last week in angel investing. So that was kind of why uh, it seemed like let's let him keep rolling. Definitely. I would just let him keep going because there's a lot yeah. of wisdom back in there. Yeah. And I think I also liked the questions we asked. I mean, I think it's kind of a combo like, halfway through, I was like, wow, I'm kind of learning a lot. Like we're asking a bunch of good questions that I think are interesting for us. And then at the same time, though, I also think you did a good job asking one or two questions that probably, you know, are more beginner or newbie focused. Like, hey, if you could do this all over again, you know, what would you do? Like we like I can't, I've already started, you've, we've both already started our angel journey. So we can't like go invest in an LP as a fund, but that's what I would probably do after listening to this interview over again. But I think it's cool to ask like at least one or two or three questions for, you know, people that are like more on the getting started tail of things. Totally. And, you know, ironically, I did LP in a fund. That's how I got started with this nice. in a friend's fund. And they've had sidecars and everything. So it was like, for me, it was like, 
That, this this was how I got into it. So I, sidecar you know, I is basically when a fund invests in a company and then they say, hey, we've got an allocation. We're investing. We got an additional allocation and yep. you can come invest with us. Yeah. So that's basically pretty common. An I feel like I get those all yeah. the time. Basically an SPV on the side of the fund investment. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, it was just funny to hear that. I inadvertently did that. I didn't yeah. do it strategically. So I think for anybody else, you know, anybody listening, Jack's advice is solid. Uh, and you can learn from some experts. I mean, that's like the end of the day. That's like the, the fastest path to success is just cutting the corner and getting the knowledge from the people that have done it and um, felt the pain. Sweet. Thank you, Jack. Ah, it was great. All right. Looking forward to the next one, Harry. Harry.